After receiving a ton of requests, I just wanted to share with you the amazing skin softening action which not only allows you to soften the skin, but also maintain the beautiful skin texture, everything intact and that too. Really, really quickly, all you have to do, apply the action, paint over the skin with the brush and that's pretty much it. So if you want to download the action, check the links in the description. So this video is going to be about how to use the action. Apart from making the skin smooth, this action is also quite non-destructive. You can always go back and later change the softness of the skin, change the amount of texture, all that and more. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and this photo was submitted by Pasi Yarvenpa. Thank you so much Pasi for this photo and you can download this photo using the links in the description. So first off what you have to do, remove the blemishes before applying any kind of softening. We need to remove the blemishes. If it's already removed then fine but if it's not we need to remove the blemishes. How to do that? Make a new layer and name that healing or blemishes whatever you want. Okay? Healing name that and just zoom in and remove the blemishes. Take the regular healing brush tool, not the spot one, the regular healing brush tool. Now this is kind of time consuming. If you directly want to apply the action, that's okay. But I would suggest for high end retouching, you need to remove the blemishes first before any kind of skin softening, whether it is frequency separation or this method, whatever the method is, okay? Just remove the blemishes. I'm going to do that really, really quickly. Take a sample, press and hold alter option, Click on a similar area than the blemish, just like the blemish and click on the blemish. Okay, that's it. And keep on doing that. Make sure aligned is checked and diffusion is 5. Okay, if you want to remove the line, you can do that. Just click once here, hold the shift, click on the other end. That, that way you create a line using any brush in Photoshop. Okay, you want to remove this, you want to remove this, whatever you want to do. Now, make sure your sample is set to current and below or all layers. This will allow you to take the sample from this layer too. If it's set to say current layer, the current layer doesn't have anything. So it won't make much of a difference because it doesn't have anything. So make sure it's set to current and below. If this layer is way below, you can also choose all layers, but choose all layers only if no adjustment layer is applied above that, because that will also be taken into consideration. So current and below is fine for this one. And once you clear in all the blemishes, just like that. Okay, here's the line which we want to remove. Gone, gone, this one, gone, okay. So I've just removed a few blemishes. You can take your time and remove even more. So let's go ahead and remove a couple here. Remove this one. Now, as you can see, the blemishes removed are on its own layer. So have a look. So these are the areas that we replaced using the healing brush tool and just turn it on. If we turn it off, turn it on. As you can see, few of the blemishes have been removed. Now you can create another layer and name it eye bags and you can remove the eye bags just using the patch tool or whatever you want to use. I'm going to use the healing brush. So I'm going to take a sample from right here and paint over there just like that. And it's looking pretty fine. If you want to know, there's a dedicated video on how to remove eye bags. Check out the link right here. Okay, so we remove this and that's pretty fine. Maybe take a sample from here, remove this one. That one is fine. Okay, now if you think it's too much and that's why we created a separate layer for eye bags because we wanted to have the ability to decrease what? The opacity. Okay, so this is natural. This is opacity 100%. You want to find a happy middle ground so that it looks natural. Okay, now create a new layer and this is going to be the merge layer. Before applying this action, we need everything merged in one layer. Whatever you see on the canvas, merged in one layer. Click a new layer. Create a new layer, press Ctrl Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E if you're using a Mac and then this creates a merged layer. Also you could have directly done it, Ctrl Alt Shift E, but it's safe to create a layer first, okay? Now apply the action. If you want to know how to create the action again, check the link in the description. You should know that. Now all you have to do, go to Windows and actions. The action will pop up and there's the action already loaded. If you want to know how to import the action, here's how to do it. Let me just delete that. Okay. Delete. Okay. To import the action, it's really simple. Click on this grid and choose load actions and locate the action where you have downloaded that 
and click on that, click load. It's loaded. Also, there's another way of doing this. Let's delete that again. Another way is going to this folder, actions folder. I think it was on E, actions, this one, just drag it and drop it right here. Pretty much the same thing. Now choose skin softening and click the play button and it will automatically do all the stuff and it will open up this dialog box. Now, since the values differ from image to image, that's why I've made this action customizable, which means that you can change these values. Now, for the high pass, you have to choose a value where the skin tones totally blend in. It doesn't have to be very low like this because everything shows up. Even though the skin texture goes away, you have to choose a value where everything just blends in. The skin just blends in very nicely. So here, it's too low. We can still see the unevenness there. So let's increase it even more. And by the way, you can always edit this later. Okay. I think this is very nicely blended in. I think 18 is a nice number to be at. Click OK. Again, another value will show up called Gaussian Blur. And this is for the texture. How much of a texture you want in your portrait. So if we zoom in, if we increase the texture too much, the wrinkles and everything else also shows up. Okay. So you just have to keep it increasing gradually from zero or one. I think it's 0 0.1. Keep it gradually increasing and stop at the point where you think the skin looks nice and smooth and the texture is also really good. So for this, I guess 5.4 is a good number, maybe 5.2. Click okay. Once you're satisfied now, it will give you a brush. It will give you the white color as a foreground color. Everything is automatic. All you have to do, just paint over the skin and you're good to go. Done. Done. Just stay away from the edges and you are good. Okay. Just stay away from the edges and also stay away from the highlights. Okay. It will just make the highlights a little dull. So stay away from the highlights a little bit. Stay away from the edges. If you paint over the edges, this will look strange. Okay. Stay away from the edges and keep on painting stay away from the eyebrows and we just did this part have a look at the before and after so this is the before this is the after makes a massive difference okay now you can lower down the effect of course this is a bit too much you can dim it down by using what opacity you can decrease the opacity to somewhere around 70 to 60 percent that looks more realistic before after now just to show you something let me go back and increase the opacity again and you can change the softness later as i said before just double click on this one. This is a smart object, okay? So you can change everything afterwards. So just double click on the high pass to change the softness. Okay. This one, okay. If you wanted more softness, you would have increased that. Okay, if you want less of a softness, you would have decreased that. It's totally upon you. So I guess I wanted more, maybe I'll set it to 22. Click okay. Now, as you can see, it's more soft. The texture will come back, okay? Now, if you wanted more texture, you can click on Gaussian Blur, double click on that and that will open the Gaussian Blur and increase the texture just like that and satisfied, click OK. And that's pretty much done. So this is the before and this is the final result. Hope you enjoyed this video and also this action might not work if you're using another version of Photoshop other than Photoshop CC 2017. And if it doesn't work, don't panic. Just watch this video on how to create the action and you'll be able to create your own actions, which I personally suggest you to do. Hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. And also don't forget to download the action which you won't forget. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.